right, fellas, we did it. Here we are, we made it. This is so cool. Now, I am really looking forward to meeting Hoppy Eubanks. I know he's made discoveries. I know he's a legitimate, credible treasure hunter. He takes it very seriously. Howdy, sir. I'm Marty. I'm Hoppy. Hi, I'm Hoppy. I'm Rick. Nice hey. to meet you. So I'm excited to see what he's found and the evidence he has for where the actual location of the lost Spanish mine is. Uh, Y'all come on in? Yes, yes sir, please. Sir. Thank, you. Thank you. Born and raised in Central Texas, Alfred Hoppe Eubanks worked as an aircraft specialist for more than two decades after serving in the United States Navy from 1960 to 1964. In 1971, Hoppy conducted independent research and followed clues that led to the discovery of an 18th century chest beneath a house in Fulton County, Georgia. Its contents, including letters written during the Revolutionary War, were worth an estimated $50,000. Hoppy has hunted for numerous missing treasures in the ensuing decades. But now, at age 81, he's focused on finding the location of a legendary lost Spanish mine. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Rick. All right. And supporting those efforts are geologist <laughs> Kurt Champlin and geophysicist Barriquette Derry. We got a lot of questions. <laughs> we want to find out about you, Hoppy. Oh, okay. Where did the bug bite you from? My grandpa. Oh, I see. He was a treasure hunter. It's in the blood. Yeah. So he'd take us out, you know, when we was little. And tell us about his treasure hunting. He stayed with me. Wow. And as I grew up, I treasure hunt on the weekends, you know. Well, I love it. OK, so Hoppy, tell us what you think you've found here. Well, I truly believe I found the false sense of a man. Wow. Really? Yes, sir. That's pretty cool. On February 17th, 1756, Lieutenant Governor of Texas Bernardo Miranda E. Flores left San Antonio with 23 men to investigate reports of massive silver deposits in the hills near the San Saba River. He was stunned by what he found, a site that would soon become one of the most lucrative mines in the New World. Bernardo de Miranda is going to claim that there's enough silver for everyone in Texas to have a mine of their own. The legend was that the silver was so pure and so thick that you could just scrape it off. And as it was mined, of course, they would smelt it, and it would be made into silver ingots. For two years, the operation thrived. But in 1758, some 2,000 men from the Comanche and Wichita nations carried out a coordinated attack, burning the Spaniards' mission and the nearby military fort, or Presidio. Before their retreat, the fleeing Spaniards reportedly covered up the entrances of the mine to keep the abundant riches hidden until they could return. That opportunity never came, and the mine's exact location has remained a tantalizing mystery ever since. The San Saba mine. So it's a big operation. Oh, a big operation. So you think you know where the mine is? Right. Wow. Everybody thinks it's out in Menard, West Texas. Mm -hmm. well, no, I got proof of it. Do you? Really? This is uh, Wayville, and it was found in a church in Old Mexico. Can I have a look at that, Hoppy? Oh, sure. Thank you, sir. It's it. Although waybills are often defined as lists of goods or passengers being transported from place to place, in the world of treasure hunting, the term has a very different meaning. Waybills is just simply several pages of directions going from point A to point B, point B being the location of the, of the mine or the cache. Sometimes those waybills are accompanied by a map, often a crude map, but in the end, fairly useful for getting at least close. Although its original author is another mystery, Hoppy received this waybill from a fellow treasure hunter more than two decades ago. The Los Santos of a man. The location is on this way bill. And it says, it's 70 leagues due north from the Presidio in San Antonio to the San Saba. It hits the San Saba, not on the money. OK. Very cool. Mm -hmm. After exploring a location 70 leagues, or approximately 183 miles north of San Antonio, 
Hoppy was amazed to discover a number of rock carvings that he believed could be of Spanish origin and possibly pointing to the lost mine. To corroborate his theory, Hoppy sought out some scientific help, utilizing state-of-the-art imaging technology from geologist Kurt Champlin. We conducted three resistivity surveys, and the first one that we did conduct was showing a area that was an anomaly that we wanted to further investigate that area. So uh, what we see here is an X-ray of the subsurface. Are we looking at a cross section here? It's a cross section. Okay. And the method that we used is called electrical resistivity tomography, and the red shows there are possible voids. Okay. Interesting. Electrical resistivity tomography, or ERT, works by transmitting electrical current through the ground to identify possible buried objects, voids, or structures. So unless you drill, you cannot make sure that these are voids. Right. You want to drill a well that proves that there is a cavity there. Yeah. The electrical resistivity survey that we did shows us our target where possible the mining place was. Okay, well, do you have a spot marked where you want to drill? I think I want to go near this spot. All right. Is the silver in an ore that they think in this mine, or is it? It, is, it is was it? almost pure. And uh, this is part of one of the smelters we found out there by the San Saba mine. Really? Oh, really? Smelters used to extract precious metal from raw ore? Could this be further evidence that the Spanish were engaged in mining activities in the area that Hoppy believes is the location of the lost San Saba mine? So the stories say inside this mine, there's 2,000 bars of silver in there weighing 50 pounds a piece. Also, there's a gold room in there, and it's got 500 mule loads of gold. Have you estimated how much money might be down there? I uh, estimated at $2.2 billion. Wow. Well, that's worth digging for. 